If you are preparing for a job interview in the field of electrical or automation engineering, it's likely that you will be asked about PLCs. Interview questions about PLCs can cover a wide range of topics, from the basic principles of PLC operation to more advanced topics, such as programming and troubleshooting. In general, the interviewer will be looking for candidates who have a strong understanding of PLCs and are able to apply this knowledge to real-world problems. Hi friends, it is our first video, PLC's Interview Questions and Answers. We will try to cove almost all aspects related to PLC from hardware, software, and programming, so watch full series of videos and harnesses yourself for upcoming interview. If you are new on our channel and want more informative video, so subscribe our channel and like video. PLC Interview Questions and Answers Question 1. What is a PLC? Answer. A PLC, or Programmable Logic Controller, is a specialized digital computer used in industrial and manufacturing settings to control and automate various electromechanical processes and machinery. Key characteristics of PLCs include 1. Input-Output, I.O. PLCs are equipped with a range of input and output modules to interface with sensors, switches, motors, and other industrial equipment. 2. Programming. PLCs use programming languages, such as ladder logic or structured text, to create control logic that dictates how the inputs should be processed and how the outputs should be activated. 3. Reliability. PLCs are built for rugged industrial environments and are known for their reliability and durability. 4. Real-time operation. PLCs operate in real-time, making them suitable for time-critical applications. 5. Scalability. PLC systems can be expanded with additional I.O. modules to accommodate changing automation needs. PLCs are widely used in manufacturing, process control, and automation across various industries. Question 2. What are the advantages of using a PLC over traditional relay logic? Using a PLC over traditional relay logic offers several advantages. 1. Flexibility. PLCs are highly flexible and can easily adapt to changes in control logic by reprogramming, whereas altering relay logic typically involves rewiring and physical component changes. 2. Space efficiency. PLCs are compact and can replace large panels of relays and wiring, saving valuable space in control cabinets. 3. Reduced wiring. PLCs use digital communication for inputs and outputs significantly. Reducing the amount of wiring needed compared to relay logic, which relies on physical connections. 4. Ease of troubleshooting. PLCs provide detailed diagnostic information, making it easier to identify and address issues compared to manually tracing wires in relay logic systems. 5. Remote monitoring and control. PLCs can be integrated with communication networks, allowing for remote monitoring and control which is challenging with traditional relay systems. 6. Complex logic. PLCs handle complex control logic more efficiently and can execute mathematical calculations, timers, and counters with ease. 7. Improved reliability. PLCs are known for their reliability and have a longer lifespan compared to mechanical relays, reducing downtime and maintenance costs. 8. Data logging. PLCs can log data for analysis and reporting, which is not feasible with Relay Logic 9. Ease of maintenance, troubleshooting, and maintenance are simplified in PLC systems, as errors can often be pinpointed in the software without physical inspection. 10. Enhanced safety. PLCs offer built in safety features and can integrate with safety systems, ensuring safer industrial operations. Question 3 What are the basic components of a PLC system? A PLC, Programmable Logic Controller System, consists of several key components that work together to control industrial processes and machinery. The basic components of a PLC system include 1. Central Processing Unit, CPU. The CPU is the brain of the PLC. It executes the control program, processes input data, and triggers outputs based on the logic defined in the program. 2. Memory. PLCs have two types of memory program. Memory. This memory stores the user-created control program written in a programming language like ladder logic or structured text. Data memory. Data memory stores variables, timers, counters, and other data used by the program during execution 3. Input modules. 
Input modules are responsible for interfacing with sensors, switches, and other input devices. They convert physical signals from these devices into digital data that the PLC can process. 4. Output modules. Output modules interface with actuators such as motors, valves, and relays and convert digital signals from the CPU into physical actions or control signals. 5. Power supply. The power supply provides the necessary electrical power to operate the PLC system, including the CPU, modules, and connected devices. 6. Communication ports. PLCs often have communication ports, for example, Ethernet, serial, USB, for programming, diagnostics, and interfacing with other devices or systems. 7. Programming device. Engineers and technicians use a programming device, such as a personal computer, to create, edit, and upload the control program to the PLC. 8. Housing or enclosure. PLCs are typically installed in protective enclosures or cabinets to shield them from environmental factors like dust, moisture, and temperature fluctuations. 9. Operator interface. Some PLC systems include an operator interface panel or human-machine interface, HMI, for manual control, monitoring, and interaction with the PLC. These components collectively enable a PLC to process inputs, execute control logic, and generate outputs making them an essential part of industrial automation and control systems. Question 4. What is ladder logic? Answer. Ladder logic is a programming language used in programmable logic controllers, PLCs, to create control logic for industrial and automation applications. It is called ladder logic because it visually resembles a ladder with rungs and rails. In ladder logic, rungs. Each rung represents a single logical operation or condition. It typically consists of input contacts, control relays, timers, counters, and output coils. Input contacts. Input conditions or sensors are represented as normally open, NO, or normally closed, NC contact symbols. These symbols indicate whether an input is active or inactive. Control relays. Control relays are used to create logical operations such as AND, Oregon, and NOT gates within a rung. Timers and counters. Ladder logic allows for the implementation of timers and counters to control time-based and counting operations. Output coils. Output coils represent the outputs or actuators that respond to the logic conditions. When the conditions in a rung are met, the associated output coil will activate or deactivate. Ladder logic is widely used in industrial automation because of its graphical and intuitive representation. It allows engineers and technicians to easily design, troubleshoot, and understand. Control logic for various industrial processes and machinery. Question 5. What is the scan cycle in a PLC? A. The scan cycle in a PLC, programmable logic controller, refers to the sequential process that the PLC goes through repeatedly to perform its control tasks. It's the fundamental operational cycle of a PLC, and it typically consists of the following steps. 1. Input Scan During the input scan phase, the PLC reads the status of all input devices connected to its input modules. This includes sensors, switches, and other input devices. The PLC determines whether these devices are in an active on or inactive off state. 2. Program Execution After reading the inputs, the PLC executes the control program stored in its memory. This program consists of various logical instructions, timers, counters, and other control elements. The CPU processes this program, evaluating the logic based on the current input states and the program's logic instructions. 3. Output Update Once the program execution is complete, the PLC updates the status of its output devices connected to its output modules. This could involve turning on or off motors, valves, or other actuators based on the logic and conditions defined in the program. 4. Scan Completion With input processing, program execution, and output updating done, the scan cycle is considered complete. The PLC then begins the next scan cycle, starting again with the input scan phase. The scan cycle repeats continuously at a high speed, typically measured in milliseconds, ensuring real-time control and monitoring of industrial processes. Question 6. What is the purpose of a watchdog timer in a PLC? Answer. Watchdog timer in a programmable logic controller, PLC, 
serves as a safety mechanism to ensure the reliable operation of the PLC and the processes it controls. Its primary purposes are 1. Fault detection. The watchdog timer monitors the PLC's program execution. If the program execution takes longer than expected, or if the PLC becomes unresponsive due to a software or hardware fault, the watchdog timer will trigger a fault condition. 2. Fault recovery. When a fault is detected, the watchdog timer can initiate a predefined recovery procedure. This may involve resetting the PLC, reloading the program, or triggering alarms to notify operators of the issue. 3. System Reliability By preventing the PLC from getting stuck in an unrecoverable state, the watchdog timer helps ensure that the controlled process continue to operate safely and reliably. It reduces the risk of equipment damage or accidents due to PLC failures. In essence, the watchdog timer acts as a fail-safe mechanism that helps maintain the integrity and stability of industrial control systems by monitoring and responding to abnormal PLC behavior. Question 7. What is a PID controller? A PID controller, which stands for Proportional Integral Derivative Controller, is a widely used control system feedback mechanism in automation and industrial processes. Its primary purpose is to maintain a desired set point, target value, by continuously adjusting a control output based on the difference between the set point and the actual process variable. Here's what each component of PID represents. 1. Proportional, P. The proportional component produces an output that is directly proportional to the error between the set point and the process variable. It aims to reduce this error by applying a corrective action that is proportional to the current error. This component helps reduce steady-state errors but can lead to oscillations if used alone. 2. Integral, I. The integral component considers the cumulative sum of past errors over time. It helps eliminate any remaining steady-state errors that the proportional component might not fully address. The integral action is crucial for ensuring that the system reaches and maintains the desired set point. 3. Derivative, D. The derivative component looks at the rate of change of the error. It anticipates future error based on the rate at which the error is changing and helps dampen oscillations and overshoot. It acts as a stabilizing factor to prevent abrupt changes in the control output. By combining these three components, a PID controller provides a balanced approach to control, making it effective at regulating a wide range of processes and systems. It continually adjusts the control output to minimize the error between the set point and the process variable, maintaining stability and accuracy in various industrial and control applications. Question 8. What is Remote I.O.? Remote I.O., short for Remote Input Output, is a technology used in industrial automation and control systems. It allows data to be transmitted between a central control system, such as a programmable logic controller or PLC, and remote devices or sensors located in different physical locations. Remote I.O. systems typically consist of a central controller and remote I.O. modules connected via a communication network, often using protocols like Ethernet, Profibus, or Modbus. This setup enables the central controller to monitor and control devices located at a distance, such as sensors, actuators, or other equipment, without the need for long runs of physical wiring. Remote I.O. systems are commonly used in manufacturing, process control, and industrial applications where it's essential to collect data and control equipment spread out over a large area. This technology helps improve efficiency, reduce wiring costs, and allows for more flexible and scalable control solutions. Question 9. What is scan time in a PLC? In a programmable logic controller PLC, the scan time refers to the time it takes for the PLC to complete one cycle of scanning and processing its program logic. The scan time is a critical parameter because it determines how quickly the PLC can respond to inputs execute its control program, and update outputs. The scan cycle typically consists of the following phases. 1. Input Scan During this phase, the PLC reads the status of input devices, sensors, switches, etc., connected to it. It checks whether these inputs have changed since the previous scan. 2. Program Execution The PLC processes the control logic based on the input data it has just read. 
This involves executing ladder logic, function blocks, or other programming languages used in the PLC program. 3. Output Update After the control logic is processed, the PLC updates the status of output devices, such as motors, valves, and indicators, based on the logic's output instructions. 4. Housekeeping The PLC may perform other tasks like handling communication, error checking, and system maintenance. The time taken to complete all these phases and return to the beginning of the cycle is the scan time. For today, it is enough, and we will continue this series up almost 40 question, so please don't miss coming video. If you satisfied, please subscribe our channel and like the video and comments for suggestions. Thank you.